My journey started of being unwell started in 2003. On the 3rd of February, uh, I went in coma for four days. When I went in coma, um, they took me to St. Peter's and the doctors were just saying, the chance of me surviving was 30%. So on the fourth day, they wanted to switch off the machine. They were discussing in the room, so I heard that they are gonna switch off the machine now. There's no way I'm gonna leave. So after that, when, as they were talking, my grandmother told me that I just woke up. I just opened my eyes. And they were all shocked and surprised. So after that, they took me to a specialty renal hospital in Kashauton, St. Helia. So I went there and that's when I started to realize, oh, after, when I was in high dependence because I couldn't talk, but I, what I realized is I wanted to go to the loo, but I could not speak. And I wasn't allowed to get out of bed. So I remember very vividly, I used to, to point, they used to bring a chart to point out to me, to say, oh, that's how you can show us what you want to do. But I was very, aggressive, I wanted to go by myself. I said, no, I can walk. They said, no, 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 you're not allowed to walk. We'll bring you, the bedpan will bring you, you can't get out of bed. But I said, no, but I can. They said, no, no, no. Then a few days later, I started to feel a bit better. They started to walk with me. And after a couple of weeks, they decided to do <clears throat> they call the fistula graft, which they operated for me to be able to do dialysis. That time, my kidneys had failed. So, on the journey of while I was on dialysis, it wasn't an easy journey. If I if I look back at it right now, I can only see it was God who was with me. Because on my own, I would not have done it or made it to here. I started improving by day. I think I was in hospital from the 3rd of February until end of March. Then when I came out, they started to train me to do it at home by myself. So when they trained me, I was doing it at home. And all <clears> I could, <throat> it, was, it wasn't easy, but God was with me. I kept on praying and praying and asking God many questions. And in the end, I just, got used, it becomes the new norm for me. Although it wasn't a life, but the thing is I was living. So in along the journey, sometimes I've had more than 15 operations done on me. And sometimes God will show me you're not gonna have that operation. And, but then I would pray. 
when I pray, I'll go as usual. And the main thing I used to do, I used to pray very early in the morning because I was always saying, God, you say the Israelites, for them to have something fresh every day, they had to get up very early and, and pray. So that's what I was doing. And I continued doing that. And the operations along the way, I would pray they would get canceled. God will speak to me. Sometimes I will have dreams whereby I've gone for the operation. And when I go there, I can't breathe anymore. And I would wake up and pray and just leave it in God's hands. And that would happen. That I'll go there and maybe the surgeons would just argue. And when they argue, then they would just say, oh, we are not going to do it anymore. I remember once I was in hospital for four days and I stayed there. One of the nurses, earlier I was in the morning, the day for the operation. I woke up at three, I went to pray. Then at five o'clock, I said to the sister, is it okay if I go and shower now? She said, oh, you can go now. Because sometimes they'll say you make noise for, for others. So she said, oh, you can. So I went there in the bathroom because I could have more privacy. So I just prayed and prayed and prayed. And I said, God, if it's your will, I'll go for this operation. If it's not, I will not go. Then they, they got me ready and I was the first on the, to go through. And <clears throat> one of the surgeons came when he was with the anesthetist. They he were coming to do the final touches for me to go to the theater. So I just said to him, Oh, I pray to God that Nick, you won't do what you did last time because last time you made a big mess. And that surgeon really flipped out on me. And he just said, how can you say that to me? I made a mess. So I say to him, yes, you did. Do you know how long the wound took to you? And the way you cut wasn't right said, oh, no, 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 it's because of your veins. That's why I did such a big cut. I said, okay, that's fine. I'm just saying, hope this time you do it nice, better than you did last time. So he threw the list on the floor and he went. So the nurses who were working with him and the other anesthetist, they came back later to say, oh, we are really sorry. He said he's not gonna, he's canceling everybody because of what you said. So I just went and prayed again and I said, thank you, Lord. You do not make mistakes. If you had come to work not prepared to do this, or maybe it's not me, maybe it's the people who are going through this. He's gonna, they are gonna be saved today because they will not have their operations. So one of the ward sisters came to me she said to me, oh, you, you are such a strong person. You know, nobody can confront him, but you did. I think God loves you. Because these days, what he has been doing, everybody was just scared to say something to him. So I left that. And along the journey, uh, I said to God, God, you did not create me to suffer all my life. I am not having this, enough is enough. My story has to change. You have to change this situation. And that time I was almost nine years into dialysis. So, because I was keeping on having so many problems along the way and God, has been faithful. I prayed and I say, God, this year my new year resolution, I don't care where you're gonna get the kidney. I don't care what you're gonna do. You have to change my story. I do not want to keep on going for dialysis. 
So I was praying and overwhelmed. And when I went to dialysis, this lady, because I couldn't face everybody, I was just upset. And I walked out so that I don't, nobody will say hello to me until everyone is on dialysis, then I'll just go to my seat and sit down. So this lady, she was very drunk. Early hours in the morning, I was six, because we used to start very early. So I said, let me just walk to the shop and I'll buy a phone card and call my dad. That time we didn't have WhatsApp. So I went, as I was walking, this lady was across the road. She started calling out to me, good morning. So I said, good morning, but I, I got scared. And it's, at the same time, I thought, oh, she's very drunk. What about if she come and hit me? But through that lady who was drunk, I saw the goodness of God. And I realized I should never judge because God speaks through anybody and everybody and anything. So this lady, she called out to me and said, God hasn't left you. God is with you. He loves you. And all oh, the overwhelming ahead and the emotions it's like she came and took them all away. And I was a new person. I became strong again. So it's like when they say, you, you shall not be weary. That's what God was doing. When I started praying, I had other people who were praying for me for the transplant. I had this other man who came, who who rang me to say, oh, auntie, when are you home? I said, oh, I'm at dialysis today. I will be home around one. And he said to me, oh, I'm coming with my bishop. We are going, we are coming to pray. And I thought, oh, so the sister was working at the dialysis. We were working to get, she was working there where I was doing dialysis. So she said, oh yeah, I told my brother. So they asked for the address. They came as soon as I got here and they left me a verse. With God, all things are possible. So I hope you say to me, hold on to that verse because with God, all things are possible. And then I started meditating on that verse and I could have more revelations because when you look at the verse, it says, with God, all things are possible. All things, not some things. So it taught me as a person that all things are possible when we go before God and ask him. And during that journey, I forgot this part. When I, was, when I started dialysis 2003, this lady doctor came to me. And she said, oh, we need to know, do you have a, a will? So I said, no. Why, what do you mean? She said, because with your condition, you can die anytime. Most people who have who become very ill because you were working in hospital, and when you pick up viruses in the, law, in the hospital, and you had picked a very nasty, virus, you could die within five years. So when she left the room, I just started praying. And I said, God, I'll not die. I'm not gonna die within five years like they say. I have an agreement with you that I'll live. So dying is not my portion. I will recover. The fact that I managed to, to get out of the coma, you were with me and you are still with me. So after that, when we were praying about the transplant, that year, I just uh, woke up to pray around three o'clock and by my bedroom window, a cloud came down and it was white. 
And what you, I didn't know that what God was saying to me, it was in the Bible, but it was Amos 9. I think I've mentioned it before. Amos 9, verse 13 to 15. It says, because what I had was, hold on, it won't be long. Everything else will fall in place. So I thought, oh, okay. So it just uh, happened so quick since uh, the beginning of the year. February, I got a donor. He started to do the test, but I could not believe it. At first, I thought, no, it can't be. How can someone I don't know just come because I helped the brother many years ago, he didn't have accommodation. So he said, oh, can you, uh, you work that area? Can you go and see her for me? And because I've been working too much, I can't see her. I talked to her on the phone, see how she's doing because she's, she has been very unwell and she can be very unwell very quickly. So they called me and they came to see me. And the second day they said, oh, I don't work far from here, I work I'm sure most of you know Hampton. They live, they work in Hampton. So they said, oh, I can always pop in and see you. And they said, the next day, he said, oh, so you go to dialysis all the time. What he started to ask me, my journey and how, what do I do? So I said, well, I go and leave. David, my son was very young that time. I would go and drop him at one of the ladies' house around 5.30 in the morning so that they can take him to school. Then I would go to dialysis because normally the ambulance would come at six o'clock or, or before that. So they said, oh, so after school, what do you do if you are tired? So I said, oh, normally what I do, he goes to after school club. Then after that, when I'm tired, if I, some days I'm tired, I can't pick him up straight away. But the school, they are very good with me. They know my condition. Then I was just saying, oh, how God works. The person who is in charge of the after school club, the mother had dialysis when they were young. So she understands. Sometimes she would drop my son here home if she realized I couldn't get up because it was a very, very tiring process because you do three days a week, you do one day, the next day you rest, the next day it's time to go. So sometimes even if it's the next day is the day you need to rest, sometimes you haven't rested enough, your body is still tired because it's the organs, the, ch the exchange of blood, while we were on dialysis was, was just too much. But I just want to thank God that he is faithful. And whatever we ask in his name, he answers, he hears. Even sometimes it happens as if he's quiet. He's never quiet on us. If we continue to have faith and trust in him, he is a good, good father to us. And I think today I'll finish here. The testimonies are too many. <laughs> we thank God for today. Amen.